first time of doing some things with Cyan and Riley. Um, so I'm coming from Argonaut. Um, just got back into town after being away from Denver for about six years. Um, lived in Denver for 14 years. Know a bunch of people here. Argonaut were gracious enough to bring me back. Um, so here we are. Um, we've noticed that the boys have been doing this Whiskey Wednesday thing, which we're not territorial about, but that's all the boys, and there needs to be something for the girls. And we wanted to share what we learn about wine on the job and what we've learned over life in the past as well. Um, so Riley has been with Argonaut for a few months now and spent a couple of years in Spain. So we decided for our first one, we start with Cava. Um, so Cava being sparkling wine from Spain and Sparkling wine is delicious at any time of the day, especially nine o'clock, which is why we're doing <laughs> it now. Um, and it's brunch time, so everybody gets settled into Prosecco. It's kind of popular. Everybody's drinking that. Um, it's kind of classic, easy go-to coming from Italy. Then champagne kind of kicks it up a notch, and you end up paying a little bit more uh, for quality. And it's kind of hard to find a champagne for less than 25 bucks for about the same price point. You can get some really stellar, wonderful tasting wines from Cava. So we're going to do those. We're tasting three today. Um, so go to Viudas, the first one. This is the Rosé and it is a bargain and we picked these kind of because we have a little connection to some of them, different stories. Also because we were excited about them, I wanted to try them. Um, so go to Viudas, do a number of different bottlings. Um, this is the Rosé. They also have a Brut, they have a Reserve, they have a Grand Reserve. If you've seen that bottle that has that really fancy like silver base around the bottom, it's pretty distinctive. Um, that's one of their top tier ones and it's glorious, but we picked this one because it's normally like nine bucks or something. It'll be on sale for the next week for $7.99 and being a rosé, they use slightly different grapes here. So the main grape here is Tripat. It's a red grape. It takes about 90% of the blend. And then there's a little bit of Garnacha. Am I saying that properly? Mm -hmm. Garnacha. Yeah. Garnacha. Mm -hmm. um, Riley is my Spanish coach. She's teaching me so much. Más o menos. <laughs> Más o menos. Um, so you were in Barcelona for about three years? Yes. And were you there for school or just kind of I was not being was, young and having fun? Well, yeah. I'm still young, so let's so just I didn't that. say that was over. <laughs> it was just a start. Um, it was a post-college adventure. Um, okay. I was working as an English teacher, an English second language teacher, but um, yeah, as a result of living in Spain, living in Barcelona, actually, which is about 50 kilometers north of one of the main cava regions, Penedes. So that's where a lot of these grapes actually come from in cava. So my experience living there, although I was definitely a novice wine drinker at the time, um, I really experienced how cava is part of Spanish culture, which was very cool. I mean, it's not a, it's not a pretentious, it's not a, it's not a frilly drink. It's just something that um, Spanish and Catalan people can drink in the morning, like you said, maybe at nine, um, maybe okay. for dinner as well. Yeah. We'll talk about food pairings and also as a dessert kind of thing. Um, so yeah, okay. I feel like I'm there. We're, we're transported back to Spain. So and let's some try flamenco some dancing. cava. <laughs> let's pretend it's like 10 o'clock at night and we just got out of bed and we're About off to, to the to club. Dinner. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Cheers, dear. Cheers. In Spanish? Salute. Salute. Okay. So, the Sequera Viudas. Um, so, this is one of the rosés. I like rosés in general because they tend to be a bit more limited in production. There's not as much of them around. And they, for me, and we have a little bit more of an upfront fruitiness. So, a little bit more recognizable to a lot of people on the palate instead of being like too complicated and you don't have to go in here and imagine. I don't know what the vineyard worker was doing when he was like walking through the vines and dragging a donkey behind him or get like. <laughs> Don't think about it too much. Does it smell good? Do you like the way it looks? Um, Cava, like bubble-wise, they'll say that the quality of um, sparkling wines, the bigger the bubble, the lesser the quality. I don't know if that's necessarily true all the way through, but definitely you see this little fine bubble coming through. It's pretty. It looks really exciting to drink, and I'm excited to try it. Me too. All right. I think besides like the strawberries and like awesome. raspberries on there, mm -hmm. there's also that little kind of laziness and people talk about laziness in wine all the time. And they, if you ever smell kind of like Parmesan cheese, like high quality Parmesan cheese, a lot of that is one of the main descriptors that you get coming from autolysis. And the one thing about um, cava is a 
method champagne wise wine so it's made the same way that champagne is all the attention to detail all the multiple steps in there but one of the things that is a really distinctive byproduct of the second fermentation that happens in the bottle is all the yeast cells that die in there kind of die mm -hmm. off and they sit in contact with the wine for however long they're aged at that point and that interaction of the yeast cells with the wine the oxygen in there kind of give this um, really distinct briochey, bready, like yeasty aroma. Mm -hmm. And you absolutely can smell that on each of these wines too. So it's the first thing, if I smell that, then I know the bottle was made properly met method champenoise mm -hmm. or metodo. The, in Spanish, mm -hmm. it's the, I think it's, I'm remembering, it's D-O-C. De manacion, de manacion, de origen, which means... So good. <laughs> uh, it means specifically designated from that region. So yeah. most cavas will have that on the bottle. It's also popular for a Spanish wine to have that sort of like classification on it, which just means it comes from this region where cava was produced and yeah. made originally. So that gives it sort of the stamp of approval. I mean, if it's not from Spain, it's not a cava. Mm -hmm. If it's not from Scotland, if it's not Scottish, it's... Everybody know that line, maybe? I can't say it on TV, but it's all right. Um, <laughs> so, do you like this one? I or, do. Or, the first thing you noted was strawberry, which mm -hmm. I was getting a lot of as well. It's sort of that, like, fr light fruitiness. Um, what else? And then texturally, it just kind of bounces around, like, especially with rosés, too. I don't know why. In my brain, I start thinking about what I would want to drink this with. Yeah. And here I get, like angel food cake and mm -hmm. like little coconut shavings and maybe a little raspberry jelly type on there. So I would yeah. do this absolutely with a light dessert. I mm -hmm. wouldn't go with chocolate or anything super heavy on that, but one of those light you know, or even breakfast omelets. Yeah. Or, you know, just, it's just a perfect way to start the day. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you're the type of person that likes to drink bubbles on the weekend, I think a lot of us do. Mm -hmm. um, cava is traditionally eaten with a lot of breakfast dishes. Like in Spain, they have the tortilla, which is mm -hmm. basically like a egg sort of dish made with onions and mm. it's pretty simple but people grab their kava and they make mm. their tortillas for the morning mm. and the flavors of the kava just kind of cut through that like fattiness and saltiness of that so it works really well with egg too so yep. something to try i like it mm -hmm. all right so we go on to the next one um so this one a lot of people if you've already been in the store might have seen we've had the barcino Barcino, see? She's been coaching me. I was calling this Barcino for like four <laughs> weeks. And then she's like, you mean the Barcino? I'm like, okay. Um, so I learned a lot in this one. The Barcino estate or producer, they are one of the largest Cava vineyard owners, owners in um, Spain. And that their vineyards are actually a little further south from Barcelona um, versus Penedes. Penedes? Penedes. Penedes. Mm -hmm. um, and this is classic um, Cava. So the grapes in here, Macabeo. Charello or Jarello, I've heard different pronunciations. Cha. Cha, so Charello. The X in mm -hmm. Catalan mm -hmm. is a CH sound. Oh, this is so good. So, so Charello. So, Charello, mm -hmm. Macabeo, and Parayera. Parayeras. Parayeras. Sí. Parayeras. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so, <laughs> Macabeo is a grape that you might not see in other parts of the world. It's definitely um, quintessentially Spanish. Um, it's kind of the workhorse grape, so you'll see that a dominant, pie, dominant grape in most of the white blends. Um, workhorse in the sense that it's reliable, um, so it ripens a little bit later in the season, so it avoids all that risk of frost damage. So it's kind of a guaranteed producer or sure thing for production. The Carello, 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 um, <laughs> tends to be a little bit higher end. It's a little more aromatic. Um, if you'll see some of the higher end, higher price point cavas, they will usually have a higher percentage of that in there. And then Pareira, I think, just adds a little bit, kind of bit of brightness and acidity to it. So each producer will have their own combination of how much they put in there. Oh, bring do you it. know what cava translates to? I, I actually do, but why, why don't... Why it, don't you tell me? It, it means cave. Cave or cellar, yeah. yeah. So, so that's why they named it cava. Exactly. Yeah. Just a fun fact. Yeah. And then also on that same note, Valpolicella, just because somebody in the store asked about this uh, a couple of days ago, uh -huh. but in Italy and Veneto, Valpolicella is the Valley of Cellars, or Valley of Caves, too. There you so, go. Those words. The more you know. Learning. Yeah. 
so this like instantly I don't get as much of the lazy note on this but right away I get it's a more, more creamy yeah I get passion fruit and slightly more exotic yeah. fruits of this maybe like peach mm -hmm. smooth and that to me that has much more bright acidity like my yes. mouth is salivating as I drink that and it's mm -hmm. really you have that sort of like mouth watering on the mm -hmm. insides does You're it like make you hungry? A little, but it also <laughs> just makes me want to taste it again. Yeah. Um, I like that a lot. And this one is a screaming deal. I think this one, normally $17.99, is down to $10.99. Thank you, Miss Sheila. Thank That's you, Miss Sheila. That's quite a deal. <laughs> We're super excited for that. Um, I do like this one, too. And um, another fun fact, Barcino is sort of a... A nickname, if you will, or what a lot of people call Barcelona. So this is, in fact, hmm. named after Barcelona. Barcelona. And all the fun times one could have. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I think um, we were talking about like what it was like going out. Um, I spent some time in Spain, but not as much as you. And I remember being in Madrid mm -hmm. when I got there. My Airbnb host was really cool, and she was like, "Oh, what do you do?" And I'm like, "I like food, I like wine, traveling." And she's like, well, here's a list of places to go. And if you're just wandering around, like, eating and drinking, etc. So, obviously, cava and, mm -hmm. like, bocarones and different, like, food dishes were part of it. Yeah. Um, her tidbit that she gave me, which is priceless and I'll remember forever, is if you're, like, in a restaurant and you're looking um, at the menu, if the menu has pictures on it, don't eat there. Yes. <laughs> which I thought Fair was great. Enough. Um, but it was a great way to actually avoid certain types of restaurants and make sure you're getting mm -hmm. that great local experience too. And I know something about like eating and drinking in Spain, it just seems like it's part of the culture and it's fun. It's not supposed to be formal and serious Definitely. and fancy all the time. But even the ones that are considered formal, um, El Bulli is like a really mm -hmm. famous Michelin star restaurant out there. It's not open anymore, but they often had cava as a central core to their dining experience. So if you weren't going to do the food and wine pairing and have you know, 20 different wines with 20 different courses, Cava would be the one that would suggest to go all the way through it, which I think is great because there's something texturally about this that will cleanse your palate. Mm -hmm. um, I'm addicted to salty, crunchy things. So potato chips, french fries, patatas any, bravas, patas, patatas bravas, mm -hmm. any of that with Cava, I think it's just yeah. a it has a unique pairing. like the effervescence in it as well as like the flavors from the grapes it really cuts through like fatty salty foods but mm -hmm. as well when you were saying for this one you wanted to eat it with like an angel food cake mm -hmm. that's yeah. spot on too yeah. so it really is a really versatile drink that you can yeah. have with many foods like i remember drinking it with you know fried sort of tapas it goes really well with fried squid or calamari or mm -hmm. crab cakes croquetas which are if you think of them as like stuffed little dumpling kind of things almost, but it has sort of a breading on the outside. So again, that, you know, saltiness, it was really good. And then, um, what else? Cheeses, a lot of oh, yeah. cheeses, like aged cheeses, manchego, asiago, like crumbly cheeses like Parmesan are really nice with that as well. So mm -hmm. you really can't go wrong. Or if you want to have it by itself, mm -hmm. there's gotcha. nothing wrong with that either. Another fun fact, if you didn't know, Argonaut has a handy dandy little section of cheeses and meats too. So sure. I came and bought a couple of bottles um, just for educational experience and picked up some serrano ham and then um, jamon, like the iberico ham, mm -hmm. um, and then I did manchego and majon mm. cheeses. And I actually made that meal last for dinner and then for salad the next day <laughs> and then I decorated Perfect. my greens and it was really good. And just a very satisfying and an easy way. I don't know if anybody else is like caught up in that New Year exercise thing. Like I have a Fitbit now and I'm counting my calories. But all those like foods, so actually you can eat less of them and get a good like calorie count. And it's very satisfying and filling. So And flavorful. Indeed. Yes. So speaking of flavorful, go to the next one. So yes. I picked out a couple of different ones that I wanted to taste side by side to decide which one we would do here. And the other one was the Castel Roig. Mm -hmm. So this one we picked out, it won out over the Reventos, because um, the Reventos, I liked it too, it has a really great like cava history to it, but the Reventos um, was super lazy and round and rich and just a, another example of cavas, but 
we're not allowed to drink that many in the morning, so I had to pick one. Says who? <laughs> There's people over there that are watching us. Um, but we picked the Casserai because I noticed this was like super light and bright. And when I drink champagnes, I love Blanc de Blanc styles because those just tend to be a little bit racier, a little bit cleaner. And this was just r remarkably so. And there's more like technical data on this, but let's taste it and then tell me what you think if you agree with me on that call. So. Interesting. I think it's going to be a little bit of everything in there. Yeah, I think I'm definitely getting a lot more like effervescence and bubbles in that mm -hmm. one than I did with the Barcino. Yeah. Um, still, I'm getting fruity still. Yeah. Um, I get less. Maybe peri kind yeah. of. Less tropical. Less like tropical. You mentioned. Yeah. Maybe a little bit more citrus. I get more lime and, and lemon on this as well. Yeah. And I don't want to make it sound bad, but. Tastes and feels more Spanish to me. There's kind of that, okay. like, I don't want to say sherry and have people think in the wrong way on that, but it has this like, you know, it has mature a, yeah. note to it, I don't know. It has like so. a little bite to it at the end mm -hmm. where I think this one, the Barcino, to me was, it went down super smooth, which yeah. is not bad either. So <laughs> just yeah. difference. Yeah, I think it's maybe just a touch more elegant, a little bit more refined, yeah. but like I say, like normally like, for less than 25 bucks, I think this is a really Beautiful, nice way to yeah. blow up a breakfast and do some. I wouldn't put orange juice with this one. Don't That's do what that. I'm Let's not do that for these cavas. <laughs> yeah. You I'm don't want some. this one to lose its nice pink color. Mm -hmm. And these, they're, they're beautiful on yeah. their own. So, um, But also, it's your bottle. Once you buy it, you can do whatever you want with it. <laughs> true. True. Yeah. True. Um, so other fun facts that I found out on this one. I was telling Sheila this morning, too, that I love when we do these things because it forces me to go back and study and learn more. And wine law and wine rules and trends are always changing. And I love the fact that something that I tasted 20 years ago and I couldn't stand, I taste it now and I actually kind of like it. So our palates change. And so do trends in the market. So do what winemakers are doing to respond to those trends. Or as the weather, unfortunately, gets warmer, that forces change. As new technology, new equipment comes out, that forces change as well. But this producer, uh, for years I thought it was just Castelroig was the name of the producer, but it's actually the Sabati y Coca. And um, on the label here, this little Copinet, there's a smaller group of Cava producers who have stepped away from the DO that we were talking about earlier mm -hmm. and have their own group or branding. Um, so slightly stricter regulations on aging, on organic farming, on hand harvesting. And that's out there. So you won't see DO on here, but you'll see this Copanet. And that's another little quality indicator just to show off on that. And we're a little obsessed with the butterflies on this. We, we don't really know exactly why <laughs> it's on there, but it is such a pretty bottle. They also do a rosé as well. Um, but yeah, I like how things keep changing. And I think that's something very important about life, about wine, about your diet, about what you enjoy eating and drinking and socializing and, and also comparing like tasting mm -hmm. wine with other people your friends yeah. or whoever like you might taste something different that I taste and yeah. I think that's the beauty also of having these sort of complex wines that are yeah. fun and they're light and they're yeah. I mean who doesn't like bubbles right yeah. right and you can take it all the way through dinner that it's exactly. just such an exciting way to drink and dine and hang out with your friends so um, but yeah, Sheila has given us some very gracious pricing to promote our taste buds so we can drink more and you can drink more as well. Um, so I think these prices will be available for the rest of the week. Is that about a week? Two weeks? Excellent. So yeah, just a reminder, so $7.99, $10.99, and this one goes to $14.99. So not much dollar difference between, but I think a theme maybe going forward is that we want to be able to show the difference in styles and personal preferences. The most expensive doesn't always mean the best. Mm -hmm. um, the least expensive doesn't mean the cheapest. So, but there is always a value and a satisfaction to be achieved from any price point. And I think there's a lot to be said for doing things side by side. If you're in and you're looking at the shelf and you're, you can't decide between a couple of things, like literally like not being 
mercenary in any way, like get both. Like mm -hmm. life is short. If you got a couple of friends around, you get stoppers and a lot of wines. Once they're open that first day, if they're kept in the fridge and stored properly without extra oxygen to them, will last two to three days. Um, the restaurants that I worked in, when we picked wines, were by the glass. Sometimes the wines were better the second day; that they just had more of a chance to breathe. And sometimes the the wines would actually have a shelf life of two to three days which didn't happen very often in a restaurant, but it just kind of helps, you know, for quality-wise, that sure. it's not going to fall apart the second you open it. And we mm. encourage you guys to try the wines like we try them. I mm. mean, I'm no expert, but I think it's fun to learn and to taste them side by side. So mm. like Cyan said, if you want to come in and buy multiple at a time, that's going to benefit you more if you want to learn, you know, more of the tasting mm -hmm. notes and stuff about the cavas um, in particular, as opposed to just coming in and buying your one bottle on Saturday or Sunday morning for brunch, it's make it fun. Make it a little quarantine activity and mm -hmm. let us know what you think mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. What you tasted, is it is it like what we tasted or if you tasted something different or how you like the wines because that's how we all learn. Yep. And then to that going forward, we are hoping to do more of these if um, it goes well and people are enjoying it. So other topics, if there's stuff that you want us to talk about, we're just going to literally riff off questions we get from people in the store. Um, Mats gets lots of questions um, about what wines to cook with. Mm -hmm. And he was saying it's kind of like some people come in and they think that they're grabbing Madeira for a recipe that's calling for Marsala sure. and how different the dishes would be. We get a lot of people that I'm just cooking. Like we were working our way through Julia Child's cookbook. We want to do what wine to drink. And, you know, it's fun to figure out those wines. So we would love to do a class or a video maybe on that. Um, Valentine's is coming up, so maybe sweet red wines. We get a lot of people asking about that. There's a big difference between Stella Rossa, Berry Pink Moscato, and a Lambrusco from Italy. So those are all technically sweet red wines, but they're very, very different in application and taste, what you would do with them. Um, ports and sherries always seem to be that kind of zone that nobody knows anything about. and. It shouldn't be like that. You shouldn't avoid a section of the wine shop because you don't know anything about it. But we will gladly sacrifice our taste boots and our Saturday mornings to taste. Yeah. Yes, we will. So, <laughs> all right. So thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your week and hope to see you in the store. And um, we're here five days a week. Salud. Salud. Which one do you want to toast with? Pink. Okay, pink. All right. Salud. Salud. Cheers. <laughs> Have a great week. <laughs>